so much for coming. Thanks for coming to the closing night of Gus's Kitchen. Has to have been our busiest day ever. Certainly was our best tip day ever. <laughs> well, get used to it, Ange. You're gonna be making a lot of tips at a place like Holly Hansen's. It's definitely a perk. I am gonna miss working with you, though. And I'm gonna miss working. <laughs> I didn't get the job at Cafe Rouge. I thought they really liked you. They did. They just don't like that I don't have a culinary degree. That's so unfair. <laughs> you are hands down the best cook I know. And I've worked in a lot of restaurants. Mm. Sure, I'm gonna miss this place. They just don't make diners like this anymore. Not too late to take it. I'm telling you that someone is gonna come in and turn the place into a juice bar or something. Oh, Gus, you know I wish I could. It certainly is a dream of mine to own a place like this one day. But I don't have the money, not to mention the lack of business experience. Oh, business can be learned. But talent, no. That's something that just comes as a gift to you. And you, kiddo, you are talented. So you just keep your eye on the prize. Someday, I'm sure that you'll get your dream. But just don't forget to let me know when that happens. I may be retiring, but I'll never be too old to come and have some of your chili. Speaking of chili, hmm. will you finally tell me what your secret ingredient is. <laughs> Cinnamon candy. The ones that I keep by the cash register for the customers. Those are the ones. Well, that would explain why the jar was always empty. Toaster. Where'd you get this one? Oh, I got it at the flea market yesterday. It's beautiful, isn't it? So what's wrong with modern toasters? Nothing. The old ones just brown more evenly. Right. You do know that our place is starting to look like a diner museum, don't you? <laughs> Sorry, I just I see all these things and I just can't help but picture them in my own restaurant one day. I can't help myself. So how was work yesterday? Tense. Going from Gus's kitchen to Holly Hansen's is a challenge. Last night, she yelled at me for carrying too many plates on my arm. Well, Polly Henson's is formal dining, so I kind of see her point. Listen, I hate to break it to you, but your favorite chef is not the nicest chef in town. Really? Really. She's condescending. She's got this diva quality to her. To tell you the truth, you're a better chef than her. No, I'm a cook, not a chef. Tomato, tomato. Point is, her recipes aren't even that great. Okay, I don't believe that. I mean, she just, she came out of nowhere and she built an entire brand. She's an award-winning chef. She's opened up an entire restaurant and, and she's published four cookbooks in four years. It's amazing. Nikki, you're amazing. You have all the skills to achieve the same success. I'm just saying. Thanks, Ange. Well, I'll just be happy if I can get a job. Two more interviews to go. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, good morning. Good morning, the usual? Yes, please. A double whip. You know it. <laughs> Do you have a mocha there? Thank you. So, how's the job search going? Any luck yet? No, no luck, but I'm trying to stay optimistic. I'm not gonna lie though, it's pretty hard. <laughs> well, I have no doubt that you are gonna find a job soon. This is a big city with a lot of hungry people. Well, let's hope so, because if I don't get something soon, I'm going to be one of those hungry people. Did I hear someone say they were hungry? Ooh. When you get a job, then we'll let you pay. But you heard the missus. Trust me, you don't want to argue with her. <laughs> Marty. <laughs> All right, well, thanks. Well, I'm off to another job interview. Wish me luck. It would be such an honor to be a cook here at Fanique. Yes, it would be. I ate here once, and it was one of the best meals of my entire life. 
It was Valentine's Day and my boyfriend took me out and we had the most breathtaking meal. A four course meal with a perfectly paired Pepperies and Fidel finished off with the most decadent chocolate souffle, which <laughs> he ended up um, dumping me over, which wasn't so good as you can imagine. <clears throat> but the food was very, very good. Your resume doesn't state where you went to culinary school. I, I didn't. I'm self-taught. Self-taught. Mm -hmm. This is Fenique, darling. We don't hire amateurs. Amateurs. Right. Of course you don't. Thank you for your consideration. Not too much left over today, but here it is. So how'd the interview go? Marty, what? why do you have to be so nosy? I, I, I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. He can ask. Uh, but I... I didn't get it. Oh, really? How come? Uh, well, aside from going off on a really bad Valentine's Day rant, I don't have a culinary degree, so that disqualifies me again. Don't worry. I know you're gonna get the next one. I just wish I could open my own place, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know I'm a good cook, but I'm not good at convincing others that I am. Well, your food is certainly convincing. Oh, <laughs> sure is, all right. <laughs> you guys are so sweet. Well, thanks again. Bye. Today, huh? Well, that's because you're here. Oh, what? People love your cooking. Once word got out that you volunteer here on Wednesdays, everyone comes. For those in need. Well, at least someone appreciates my cooking. Wow, Valentine's Day already, huh? Yeah, it's coming up. I think we'll get some volunteers to help us decorate once we're done. Count me in. Okay. doing? Well, given that my job hunting isn't going so well, I figured I might need to get a day job, so to speak. A day job? Yeah. You know, something that gives me a paycheck while I continue to search for my dream job. And since I'm pretty good with dogs, I figured uh, maybe I could be a dog walker. Nikki, you can't just give up. I'm not giving up. I'm just considering other options. I mean, I've got to pay the rent somehow. Well, uh, I wish I could help you out. I'm just not making the kind of tips I thought I would. Bad tippers at a place like Holly Hansen's? Tips are fine. It's just not enough of them. Business is down. Oh, that's too bad. And surprising. If you don't have any plans later, maybe you can come by closing, grab a glass of wine. If Holly's there, maybe I can introduce you. Really? Yeah. I mean, considering you idolize her, maybe you might want to meet her? Yeah, absolutely. I just hope I don't make a fool of myself and start to ramble. No, I can't imagine that. <laughs> oh, yeah? Okay, I can imagine a little bit, but that's why we love you. I'll see you at 10. Mm hmm Okay. Holly Hansen. Look, Holly, all I'm saying is that you need to try it. The recipe needs to be tweaked. I don't need to try it. It's my recipe. I understand what you're saying. I'm just a little confused. Look, all I'm saying is that we need to come up with a solution to the problem. And what is the problem? The cassoulet. Have you tried it? I know what it tastes like. I don't think that you do, because the recipe is bland. Bland? Yeah. Perhaps the problem lies with my executive chef, who is <laughs> unable to execute my recipe properly. But your executive chef respectfully disagrees. I believe my name is on the front door. So would you please stop arguing with me and do as I say? Are we good? Yes, chef. Thank you. Hey. Hey. 
you made it. I did indeed. Wow, just look at this place. Yep. Listen, give me a minute. Why don't you go wait by the bar? Check yeah. out the cute bartender. Definitely my type. <laughs> Hi. Hi. What can I get for you? Glass of red wine, please. House, or would you like to see the wine list? Um, maybe you could pick out something special for her from the list. This is my best friend, Nikki. <laughs> Nikki, this is Jared. Hi. Nice to meet you. Same. How come you never mentioned him before? Oh, because there's no future there. He has a girlfriend or something? No, but apparently Holly frowns upon her employees dating. <laughs> Here you go. Enjoy. Uh, a cassoulet? Tonight's special. On the house. Wow. Thanks. <laughs> hey. What's it tonight? Uh, something that pairs with frustration. Got it. <laughs> so you have the special. Mm -hmm. How was it? Uh, it was, uh, it was okay. I just wasn't that hungry. But you got to try it at least, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. Did you like it? Oh, um, yeah, I'd pass maybe. Try something else, perhaps. <laughs> what was it about it that you didn't like? It was just a little bland. I think it needed something. I don't know. Good to know. You know, frankly, I'm a little surprised. It was that bad? No, it's just, it could have used something to pizzazz it up, you know? Um, it just wasn't really, it didn't really have that wow factor that I was expecting. The wow factor? Mm -hmm. You know, Holly probably just needs a new executive chef or something. That's what I'm thinking. It sounds like you eat out a lot. No. No, uh, I just know a lot about food. Of course you do. Because you eat food. And everyone's a food critic these days. <laughs> oh, no. I'm not a food critic. Actually, a lot of people think that I am. I was at the grocery store last week and... I'm sorry, did I say something to upset you, or...? No. No, I just, uh... I just got some bad news tonight. Oh. Sorry. Well, if it makes you feel better, I'm sure your news isn't as bad as the feedback they're getting on this castle, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night. We can just talk in here. Look, if you're afraid that I'm going to see what your office looks like, it's a little late, Holly. I've already seen it. Oh, I just have to catch up on some of that paperwork. There's a pile of paperwork in your office that looks like Mount Everest. What happened to your assistant? She quit. So did the last three. Holly, listen, you need to hire someone to organize all of this. Now, I've been asking for the financials for months. And as your investor, I'm entitled to see them on a regular basis. I just don't think you understand. I'm not just running this restaurant. I am overseeing my entire brand. Exactly. And that's the problem. You need to focus and pay attention to the restaurant. I completely revamped the menu six months ago at your request. No. What you did was you pulled out some of your older signature dishes instead of creating new ones. Now, I have to be honest with you, I don't think this place is going to survive with just the status quo. Look, please, just get me the paperwork soon so I can dig through all this and see how bad things really are. I'll see myself out. Hi. I am so sorry. I didn't mean to be a fly on the wall, but 
I, I guess you two didn't see me sitting here when you came in, so I just, I didn't really know what to do exactly, so. A cough would have been the polite thing to do. You're absolutely right. <sighs> Listen, I, I, I couldn't help overhearing your conversation and the fact that you need a new assistant. I'm sorry, you are... Nikki, um, I'm Angela's friend. Um, Angela, your server. Oh, yes, yes, the new girl. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, I don't mean to be intrusive, but I just happen to be looking for a job, and I'm very experienced in the restaurant industry, and it would be a privilege to work for you. It, that is, if you're hiring, of course. Do you know who I am? Oh, yes, of course I do. Actually, it's kind of embarrassing to admit, but I think I own every single cookbook that you've ever published, which is why it would mean so much to me to work for you. Uh, what did you say your name is, sweetheart? Nikki. Nikki Turner. And you've done office work? Office work? Yeah, uh, yeah, of course. Did I mention I am available to start right away? criminal record? No. Although I did get a parking ticket once, but I, I paid it immediately. Mm -hmm. And uh, Angela will vouch for you, right? Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. 100%. Mm -hmm. Well, I am desperate. Uh, does that mean that I'm hired? Meet me tomorrow at noon. And that conversation you just eavesdropped on? Doesn't leave the room. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna, um, the exit's this way, and you look beautiful, by the way. <laughs> So how come so late today? Oh, I got a job, but I don't start till noon. Oh, that's great news. Congratulations. So you'll be cooking again? Uh, well, not exactly. I mean, I'm working in a restaurant, but I will be doing office work, so. Oh, well, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> oh, the best part about it is I'll be working for a top chef who can teach me the ins and the outs of the business. That is a smart move. So who is this top chef? Holly Hansen. Have you eaten at a restaurant before? Well, we, we know who she is. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so late. Um, I gotta go. Hey, don't forget your coffee. This isn't the food critic from the oh, other night. my apologies. Look, I'm just running late, and I'm uh, uh, just a little frazzled. And, yeah, I can um, see that. Uh, look, if you're here for dinner, I don't think they open for a few hours. Thanks. I'm well aware of the hours. And you're waiting for... Good. I'm glad you're here. Paul, go ahead. Open the door. I guess you guys have met? Is there any uh, reason why we should have? Uh, yes, this is my new assistant. What is your name? Nikki. Nikki. Nikki, this is Paul, my executive chef. For God's sake, Paul, can you wear a clean shirt to work? Well, here we are. Okay. Um, you can put your things over there. Okay. And, um, uh-oh, before we start, I need for you to pick up my dry cleaning. Oh. Um, and when you get back, I'll have a couple of other errands for you to run. Okay, sure, absolutely, whatever you need. Oh, danger. Lady for the coffee coming through. Do you want some? Yeah, as long as it's in a cup, not down my shirt. Right. How come you didn't tell me who you were last night? Somehow I doubt that would have stopped you from speaking your mind. You're probably right. But at least I wouldn't have put my foot in my mouth. 
Truth is, you were right about the castellet. It was bland. Nikki, come with me. Somewhere in all these boxes are restaurant receipts from the last few years. I need you to dig them out and enter them into my accounting ledger. Okay. Uh, any idea where I should start? Not a clue. Okay. Holly's kept me pretty busy. Kind of feels like old times working together, right? Uh, not exactly, but at least we're under the same roof. Oh, and five plates. <laughs> right. Ooh, thanks. Makes me really glad you're here. Yeah, don't forget it. Nikki, where are you? I'm still at the restaurant. You are putting way too much into this job. I didn't mean to. If you can believe it, I got locked in. I am not even going to ask how. I wish I could help, but I don't have a key. I think the cleaning crew comes in a few hours. I'll just leave with them. Okay, well... Call me if you need anything else. Okay. Bye. Bye. world are you doing in my kitchen? Oh my gosh. Oh, thank goodness you're here. I, I got locked in. Of course I'm here. The alarm company called. The motion detectors went off. Oh, I, I didn't hear an alarm. Who gave you permission to be in my kitchen? I'm sorry. I just, I was so hungry I hadn't eaten all day. And... This cannot happen again. No, it won't ever, I promise. And again, I'm, I'm very sorry. What exactly is this? Oh, it's just a, a beef stew I kind of threw together. What is that smell? There's a sweet aroma. Oh, I braised the beef in peanut butter and root beer. I, I freestyle when I cook. It's sort of my thing. Could I offer you some? <sighs> Have you been cooking long? Actually, it's, it's really what I do. Before I came to work for you, I was a cook at Gus's Kitchen downtown. Do you know it? It's a diner. Oh. <clears throat> I don't do diners. You know, I really should fire you for this little stunt you pulled. Please don't. Well, it's not all your fault. I should have made sure you were gone before I locked up. So you're not firing me? Oh, I was a struggling chef once myself. I know what a wonderful opportunity it is to get to work in a kitchen like this. You're going to let me be. You'd really allow that? As long as we kept it between us. 
I don't want the rest of my staff to know what a softie I am. Yeah, um, you have my word. I won't tell a soul. Well, great. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I, wow. Oh. I, um, it just, it, it really means a lot to me. Well, why don't you go home? You've had <laughs> such a long day. <laughs> oh, by the way, how did you like the stew? Oh, it's okay for a novice. Great. Thanks. Holly? Paul, what are you doing here? Isn't it a little early to prep for dinner? No, I just wanted to try something out. Recipe I've been working on. My restaurant, my recipes. All I ask is for an open mind until you see what I come up with. Fine. A little early for you to come in, isn't it? You know what they say, early bird gets the worm, right? Hey, Henry. Thank you for calling me back. Yeah, yeah. Listen, Holly, I've got some bad news. I was able to do some preliminary projections, and your earnings report is worse than I thought. Meaning? Meaning you're going to have to find a way to turn this place around, or I'm not going to be able to keep us open much longer. Well, as a matter of fact, I am working on some amazing ideas right now. I see. Well, you might want to run this by your investor. I will. I will. As soon as I'm ready. And you will be impressed. Great. Let me know right away. Oh, it looks like everyone's coming in early today. Yep, just trying to make a good impression on Holly. Maybe it'll last longer than her last few assistants. Holly can certainly be a challenge to work for. Actually, I think she's pretty cool. Oh, cool. That's a nice way of describing her. You've worked for Holly for a while, haven't you? I have indeed. How did you know that? Have you been asking about me? Maybe. Is that so? Well, what else did you find out? Mm. Well, you don't like food critics. You keep a clean and fast-paced kitchen. And you can't stand it when people don't know the difference between a turnip and a parsnip. That's some good digging. Yeah. I mean, aside from being two completely different vegetables, there really isn't much of a difference. Both root vegetables and both taste pretty much the same. <laughs> Can I help you with that? Oh, no thanks. It's helping me with my weight training. <laughs> I haven't had time to go to the gym, so. Um, mind if I take a peek? Feel free. Aww. Heart shaped ravioli. Let me guess for Valentine's Day. To be determined. And your filling is pine nuts. With artichoke hearts and mushrooms. Sounds delicious. Sounds dreadful. Rack of lamb, lobster, filet mignon, that's what we serve on Valentine's Day. Come on, Holly. We've been serving those every year on Valentine's Day since I started here. Can't we just switch things up? Well, not with that. Don't you think heart-shaped ravioli is a little amateurish? It's Valentine's Day. It's all about hearts and flowers. Well, those are the decorations, not the cuisine. Hey, Ange. Yeah. Listen, I'm gonna be working late tonight, so don't wait up for me, okay? Yeah, I'm staying late, too. Really? Yeah, it's Sunday night. Paul cooks dinner for the staff. It's uh, kind of virtual. That sounds fun. It is. You should join us. <laughs> Maybe I will.
So, what does our resident food critic have to say? Is the pappardelle up to your standards? You're never gonna drop that, are you? Eventually. So, how was it? It's really good. Oh, I sense a butt. What? No. No, not at all. Okay, come on. Give me a review. Well, I'm no food critic. We've already established that. <laughs> Please, you can be honest with me. Okay, the only thing I noticed, and, and seriously, it's excellent, but it's just that I've tasted this exact same parpadelli at other restaurants. I, I mean, yours is by far one of the best I've ever had. But there's nothing about it that tells me that you made it. I'm sorry, Paul. I, I, look, I didn't mean to offend you. It's just I can be a little opinionated when it comes to food, and I just... Uh, I, I guess I just have my own style of cooking. Your own style of cooking? Ice cream cones. I could see it in a dessert, but in a dinner recipe... I dredged the bird in yogurt and honey, then coated it in the cones and onto the fryer. It's like chicken and waffles all in one. No, that sounds just perfect. For a county fair. You're a real food snob, you know that? <laughs> I studied at the Cordon Bleu. Of course you did. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? It's just... Well, you know, schools like that are very structured, very black and white. There's not a lot of room for gray. But those are the tools that a chef needs in order to rise above the mediocre. To me, gourmet cooking is a fine art. Well, what about abstract art? Hmm? <laughs> I'm guessing that's your preference. I'm just saying, crayons can make art too. Fair enough. Okay. <sighs> so? It's apparent that you're not a cook. You are a chef. This is outstanding. Do you really mean that? You certainly have a style. Thanks. You have no idea what it means to me to hear you say that. I mean, I love this job, but I just miss being in the kitchen. So. Well, cheers to you, food critic Nikki Turner. <laughs> We're cheersing chicken. What else would you expect from an uptight, structured Cordon Bleu executive chef? <laughs> Oh, it is so nice to be here and just relax today. You must be exhausted. You have had a lot of late nights this week. Mm. I hope Holly is paying you overtime. She is, sort of. You deserve a medal for putting up with her. No, she's seriously not that bad. She's been pretty nice to me. Okay, I can't quite wrap my head around that, but maybe you remind her of herself when she was young. Hmm. Maybe. By the way, I picked up a shift on Valentine's Day. You mean I have to watch When Harry Met Sally all by myself this year? Well, as much as I want to reminisce about the cons of Valentine's Day and eat chocolate, it's a big night for tips. Not to mention, this way I can say I spent Valentine's Day with Jared. <laughs> okay. Hey, how do you like working with Paul? Paul? As in executive chef Paul? Yeah, Paul as in the guy who's cooking behind the stove all day, Paul. Don't tell me you're crushing on him. What? No. Come on, I just think he's a really talented chef. Besides, I don't crush on people. It's not my thing. Oh, no, of course not. So, but you guys have been chatting, right? Yeah, we've had a few conversations here and there. Nothing big. Really? So what have you guys been chatting about? Cooking and recipes and stuff. Huh. Yeah, sounds boring. <laughs> Although, for a couple of chefs... Sounds like you two might have a lot in common. Okay, you're reading way too much into this. Am I? <laughs> if you're smart about it, Holly will never find out. Angela's best friend is Nikki. Nikki is Holly's assistant. I wouldn't worry about it. I don't think that Nikki would say anything to Holly. You don't know that for sure. I got a feeling about it. I just don't think that she would. Because if I wait too long to ask her out, then I run the risk of meeting someone else. That is true. Fast route. Now I run the risk of getting fired. Tough choices, my friend. Tough choices. Ha. 
<laughs> there you go. Thanks so much. I was following you. <laughs> okay. I saw you at the farmer's market and I was wondering what's with all the produce. Well, now you know. So you work here? No, no, I just volunteer here. The center serves free meals to families or anyone really who's in need or hungry, so I cook here twice a week. What's on today's menu? <laughs> There's red lentil soup with bacon and turnips. Then we have ham, chicken and cheese sandwiches. The ham and cheese are left over from last night. I'm beginning to understand where you developed your style. Oh, I see. My style is too refined for you. <laughs> Pass me a knife. I'll start chopping. Cardamom, in that? You're right. It gives it the kick. It's that abstract crayon I was talking about. I hope we didn't work you too hard today. <laughs> no, it was fun. It's a nice change from working for Holly. Yeah. Why do you stay there? I mean, just because you could work anywhere. Holly gave me my start. I owe her. Hmm. I guess the food's just not as I imagined, you know? I thought it would be more innovative. You know, Holly's problem is that she just she tries to control everything. She wasn't always like that. The Holly that gave me my start was original, collaborative. It just changed. Mm. A pop-up shop? Yeah. Yeah, it's this really cool idea. You can rent unused space for a couple of days and pop up your own shop, so to speak. Nice. Hot chocolate? Yeah, sure. You cooked at Gus's kitchen. Mm -hmm. Loves that place. Really? I never would have figured you as a diner guy. <laughs> Just because I cook gourmet cuisine doesn't mean that's all I eat. Okay. So what happened to Gus's? I never heard why he closed. Oh, it's sad, really. He tried really hard to sell the place, but everyone wants a modern restaurant these days. No one wants a diner. So anyway, he decided to retire, and his kids didn't want to take it over. I had a few of those discussions myself. My dad wanted me to take over the family business. I had other plans. Oh, the age-old father-son disagreement. What about you? Well, uh, my mom was a waitress, and my dad is a restaurant food supplier. So I guess in a way I did go into the family business. Is this the best hot chocolate or what? It is really good. <laughs> Except there's some ingredient in it that I just can't put my finger on. Lavender. Mmm, of course. So good. You know, the only thing that would make this better would be an almond biscotti from Delucci's. Do you know that place? Is that a joke? <laughs> no, just a question. Why are you looking at me like that? My last name is Delucci. Marty and Trisha, your parents? Wait, you know them? <laughs> are you kidding? I've gone in there like every day for the last two years. Although I've gone in there less since I started working for Holly, but it's funny. When I told them I started working there, they, they didn't mention you. 
makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's no secret that my father and I don't have the best relationship. Delucci's is the family business he didn't go into. Yep. I wanted to go to Paris, study at the Cordon Bleu. My father saw that as a slap in the face. He couldn't understand why I would want something different than him and my grandfather. We both stood our ground with my mom stuck in the middle. Long story short, we don't see much of each other these days. Sorry. I wish there was something I could do to help. It's okay. It is what it is. But you are right. One of their biscottis would go great with this right now. <laughs> Morning, Trish. I'm just gonna have a black coffee today. You got it. Uh, listen, can I ask you something? It's kind of personal. Yeah, sure. What's, uh, what's on your mind? Well, how come I didn't know that Paul was your son? Oh, I'm so sorry. I really wanted to tell you. I just couldn't find the right moment. Things have been so strained between Paul and Marty that it's been, well, it's been tough. Oh, I'd imagine. But I knew you'd find out eventually. <laughs> Here. Oh, how can I resist? <laughs> Paul actually called last night to say hello. He did? Mm-hmm. And he had an awful lot of questions about you. Really? Oh, sure. Who are we talking about? Um, no, no one. one. Mm-hmm. Paul. You were talking about Paul. I was just saying that I wasn't even surprised to find out that he was your son. You weren't surprised? Mm -mm. Really? How so? Oh, well, uh, in a lot of ways, I think that he takes after you. You know, he's one of the best chefs in the city. You're the best baker in the city. Glad you think so, but I don't think my son is all that impressed by my baking. Wait, are you kidding? No, he was actually talking about how amazing your almond biscotti are yesterday. Really? Really. As a cook, I mean, he is just so talented. Anyway, uh... Thanks for this, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. So talented. Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah, I heard it. Just, just wanted to make sure. Quite a departure from your usual cuisine. Oh, wow. Polly, if your new dishes are as good as this one, we don't have anything to worry about.
I... Uh... scared me half to death. Believe me, it was unintentional. You know, I almost flattened your head with a skillet. Well, maybe next time go for the rolling pin. What are you doing sneaking around anyway? I wouldn't call coming into my place of employment sneaking around. Point taken. Also, I have a key. So do I. You have a key. Why would Holly give you a key? Because she likes me. A lot. It took her two years to give me one. What is going on here? I gave my word I wouldn't say anything. You gave your word you wouldn't say anything? Come on, what's going on? I... <sighs> Holly just lets me cook after hours. Why? Because she found out I'm a cook and, well, for whatever reason, she told me to have fun and do my thing. Well, it looks like your thing is about to boil over. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Looks interesting. It looks awful. Awful is the word that you're looking for to describe that. Okay, listen, don't judge me. I, I was just, you know, experimenting with savory and sweet, so I threw in a couple kettle corn and, well, as you can see, the sugar caramelized and burnt. You gonna go for round two? Ah, uh, no, no, I've had enough upsets for one night. So, the kitchen's all yours. I'm assuming that's why you snuck in. I came in. Mm to try out something new with my own for Valentine's Day. Thought it would meet with Holly's approval. Oh, well, mind if I stick around? I'd like that. <laughs> no, Holly would be crazy not to like this. It's perfect for Valentine's Day. I was thinking maybe to do it as a pork loin instead of a pork chop so it could be shared. You know, a lot of couples want to come in for a romantic meal and order for two. Yeah, I understand the concept. I just don't practice it much. What? Ordering for two? <laughs> no, the romantic meal part. Yeah, I hear you. Being in the restaurant business doesn't leave you much time for personal life. Yeah, not to mention the fact that manning a grill all day makes a chef smell like grease. So no boyfriend? No, no boyfriend. I had a serious relationship two years ago, but um, we worked together and it just got too messy. I can totally relate. I once dated a fellow chef and mm -hmm. After a disagreement, she sabotaged my bolognese with an entire jar of cayenne pepper. <laughs> yeah, that experience definitely taught me never date someone that you work with. Yeah, better not to complicate your work and personal life. <laughs> so, <laughs> what happened with you and your ex-boyfriend? Well, for starters, we just weren't really a good fit. But mostly, he just didn't support my dreams, and it hurt. So what are your dreams? To open up a place like this one day. You know, looking back, I, I guess deep down I always knew we weren't a match. I just wasn't really honest with myself. Anyhow, weeks turned into months, months turned into a year, and Valentine's Day rolled around, and he took me out to dinner. I was certain he was going to propose, but he broke up with me. <laughs> On Valentine's Day? Yeah. So, it's safe to say I'm not really a Valentine's Day person. Well, here's to us single chefs around the world. May we find companionship in the food that we prepare. To the food that we prepare. <laughs> what a beautiful meal you're sharing. Oh, did the alarm go off? <laughs> 
We were just cooking. Just decided to make yourselves a nice romantic dinner for two. Romantic? No, not at all. Nikki, I was very clear about the terms of our agreement. I trusted you and you have betrayed my trust. And Paul, how in the world is it possible that you think it's appropriate to have a date on my dime after hours in my restaurant? Holly, there's nothing inappropriate going on here. Holly, if you just let me explain. I'm going to make this easy on all of us. You're both fired. Are you serious? Very. Come on, Nikki. You've been liberated. Can you figure out what just happened in there? Other than the fact that we both just got fired? No. Here. Come on. Thanks. I, I can't help but feel like this whole thing is my fault. I'm so sorry, Paul. No, you shouldn't be. I'm the one who has history with Holly. I'm sure that her anger was just directed at me. You were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. What was she doing in the restaurant tonight? She never comes in after hours. It's not like we can go back in there and ask her. I guess it doesn't matter. She's, my head is spinning. Yeah, mine too. Coast is clear. Holly's gone. I'm just gonna grab my bag and then I'll be out. Okay. I'll be quick. Go, 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 go. Okay. Quick, quick. New menu. What? No. No way. What? Peanut butter root beer bourguignon? Waffle fried chicken? Lamb mole? Sound familiar? Yeah, those sound like your recipes. They are my recipes. I can't believe this. Surveillance footage, why would she record you? Because she's stealing my recipes. Oh. Should have known you'd be cleaning. You're always cleaning when you're upset. Cleaned all of these twice already. You're home early. Wait, did Holly fire you too? No, no. She did give the staff the week off though. They're doing renovations at the restaurant. She's gonna reopen with a new menu. Right after. understand how she can have the entire world in her hand and then rip off someone who's struggling. It's not oh. right. I mean, it isn't fair. I always knew Holly could go low, but I never thought she'd go that low. Hey, listen, um, I have to head to your parents' bakery to pick up some dinner rolls. You want to come with me? Uh, I think I'll pass. Listen, Paul, um, I've been thinking about your relationship with your dad, and it seems like maybe you two just need to talk it out. Seems like you both feel misunderstood. Misunderstood. Do you know that he has never even tried anything that I've made? It's probably for the best. He can be really judgmental. No, you're an amazing chef. I'm sure he'd love anything that you cooked. <sighs> Look, Nikki, the relationship between me and my father, it's, it's complicated. I know you're just trying to help, but I'd rather you not get involved. Paul, we can't thank you enough for helping out today. Happy to do it again. My schedule is suddenly wide open. And Nikki, a really great meal. Again, everyone loved it. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. Well, Paul was a huge help, too. No, you really need to get your own restaurant. It would be a big hit, I'm telling you. She is right, you know. A pop-up. 
Hot chocolate. Hey, you remember that place that we got the hot chocolate from, that pop-up? Yeah. What if we opened up a pop-up, pop -up. right? I think you're onto something here, Nick. I mean, all we have to do is find a space. Closed or vacant, has a really good kitchen. I know, just the spot. Pop-up, what? Just think of it as a rental. We'll lease the space for three days and then we'll return it just as we found it. No. Oh. Don't hear anyone banging on the door wanting to take it over. <laughs> so that's a yes? Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. We'll go to the bank and get your deposit right away. Well, there's no rush. This all sounds very exciting, you two. <laughs> this is fantastic. It's the perfect way for me to try my own thing but start small. We just have to open before Holly Hansen's reopening so everyone knows those recipes are mine and not hers. Maybe we could invite some food critics. Food critics? But you hate food critics. <sighs> hey, it's perfect. What days are you thinking? Let's do Valentine's Day. <laughs> this menu is perfect, but I think we should supplement my recipes with a few more dishes. Hmm. What were you thinking? How about your heart-shaped ravioli? You didn't think that was too tacky? I think it's romantic. So we're all set to post to Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, The Patch, Reddit. I've got a friend at the Tribune who's going to blog about it. And I've got some of the city's top food critics coming in. They were scheduled to go to Holly Hansen's for a tasting, but I convinced them that this was an extravaganza they didn't want to miss. <laughs> all I need is a name. What are you guys going to call it? How about Nikki and Paul's? Paul and Nikki's? It's not much better. Mm. Hmm. How about two hearts pop up? I love you, pop up? Mm. Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day. What about Cafe Cupid? Yeah, it's perfect. Cafe Cupid it is. Okay, so I have you down for two on Valentine's Day night. Yep, great. We'll uh, see you then. Okay, bye. We just sold out. We sold out? Yeah, we're completely booked for all three nights. <laughs> Sorry, this is... Not a good idea. And very unprofessional. Unprofessional. Yeah. I don't want another cayenne pepper incident. <laughs> Nikki! Yeah. I, I think I hear Angela calling yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I've got some work. <laughs> yeah. Nikki! For opening night. To Nikki, otherwise known as Chef. Love, Paul. Thanks. I love it. <laughs> so you almost kissed? No, yeah, almost. Then it kind of turned into more of an awkward hug. What are you gonna do about it? Do about it? There's nothing to do about it. Okay, Paul and I have a professional relationship. Oh, I don't buy that for a minute. <laughs> you gotta let your walls down, Nikki. I mean, give the guy a shot. I just, I don't think we should cross that line. It's unprofessional. Oh, now you just sound like Holly. Lots of people who work together fall in love. What, love? Like you're only human, Nikki. As much as you don't want to, it is inevitable that you will fall in love again. He's probably falling for you, too. Look, I, I appreciate the optimism, Ange. I do, but you and I both know I'm just 
not really relationship material. So, let's just drop this. Okay. Hey, what do you think about this one? Too plain. This is your big night. Gotta make a statement. Oh. Now this is what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah, I'm so sorry for the last minute order, but it's just, yeah. well, we, we kind of threw everything together. I mean, we only finalized the menu last night, but I guess that's why they call it a pop-up restaurant. <laughs> of course we can fill the order. Uh, where's it going to be again? Oh, Gus's kitchen downtown. Yeah, he's um, going to run us out the space. Us? You have a partner? Well, yes, it's Paul. Paul? My Paul is going to be your cooking partner? Well, it's mainly going to be my recipes, but we are featuring a few of his originals as well. Originals? Sounds fancy. Sounds like Paul. Big chef and too good to be a baker. No, you should come. To the opening? Mm -hmm. How wonderful would that be? No. Oh, come on, Marty. What? what do you want me to say? Listen, I, I just know Paul really wouldn't want me there. Oh, no. You're wrong. He would love it if you were there. It would mean so much to him. And for you to try one of his recipes... He... He's making a ravioli that's just out of this world. If my son wanted me there, he would send an invitation. Listen, just consider this an invitation, okay? From me. I'll consider it. Okay. <laughs> Truffle oil? Yeah. You pass me the, uh... <sighs> I gotta admit, this is the most fun that I've ever had in the kitchen. Yeah, I know. This is how it's supposed to be, right? It's all thanks to you. You made this happen. No, we did. We're a team now. Maybe we should start thinking beyond the next three days. Like, maybe something permanent. Permanent? Yeah. Like a permanent space. A restaurant space. Right. Too presumptuous? I mean, you do want to do this with me, right? Yes, of course I do. Absolutely. Yeah. You guys have got to come and see this. You know you've made it when your customers are posting photos of their meals on social media. Congratulations. You're a hit. Not to mention you have the top food critic in the city here. You're going to get your name and your recipes out before Holly. Wow. Wow. Um... Can you guys just give me a minute? That's great. Mm. Huh? Mm. <sighs> Nikki, you okay? Yeah. Yeah. I just, uh, I just. I don't know, I got really overwhelmed in there, you know? I mean, I'm living my dream right now, in this very moment, and it's surreal. I love this song. May I? Are you kidding? You don't think I know how to dance? I know, I'm just saying one of us should uh, be in the kitchen, you know? We have one of the most experienced staffs and one of the best restaurants in the city. I think they'll be able to manage for a few minutes. Oh, so romantic. You know, it's not just cooking with you that I enjoy. This is nice, too. I was wondering if maybe if you'd like to join me for dinner when we're finished tonight. Like a Valentine's Day dinner? Yeah. Like a Valentine's Day dinner. Okay, sure. I like that. With each word, your tenderness grows, tearing my fear apart. One of you needs to get out fresh schmooze.
touches my foolish heart Lovely and never, never change Keep that breathless charm Won't you please arrange it Cause I love you Just the way uh. Where on earth is everybody? I thought you had critics lined up to come sample. That's what I was coming to tell you. They canceled. They canceled? All of them? Yes, all of them. I looked up online and I think they're going to that big pop-up event downtown. Pop-up? This new chef, Nikki Turner, she's doing this cool three-night thing called Cafe Cupid. <clears throat> the address? Mm. Sweetheart, it is fabulous. Mom, Dad, what are you guys doing here? What kind of a welcome is that, huh? I, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised to see you, is all. Nikki invited us. Nikki. Nikki, yeah, well, I sure didn't get an invite from you, now did I? She told us that some of your recipes were going to be featured. I got to go. I got to get back to the kitchen. We're really busy. Oh, wait, wait, I... Everything okay out there? Everything's fine. You sure you're okay? My dad is out there. He says that you invited him. Why would you do that? Oh, well, I, I stopped at the bakery yesterday to pick up some desserts and I... What, you thought that you would just invite him without asking me? Uh, well, yes, I suppose I did. I asked you specifically to not get involved. I wasn't trying to get involved. I just... I just... I shouldn't have done that. Everything was going so well tonight. I wasn't expecting me dealing with my judgmental father tasting my food for the first time. That's it. Last order has officially gone out. <laughs> so you can take it from here? Oh, you want to leave? Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Great work tonight. What just happened? Well, I am. Um... Earlier, I... Nikki, I need you to come out front right away. It's urgent. Nikki Turner stole my recipes. Real. She was my assistant, and I fired her. She must have invited you to get some press and to pretend that these are her new recipes. Isn't that a shame? For someone to stoop so low to steal from someone? So please... This menu will be featured at my new restaurant when I open after my renovations are completed. I hope you'll come and be my personal guest. I'll be there. Thank you. Two can play at your game, my dear. I heard that you had a very successful evening. It was successful. Until Holly Hansen showed up. So you're sure that you don't want the rental for tonight, tomorrow? I would. But last night didn't exactly go as planned. And all of our reservations for tonight and tomorrow canceled, so... <laughs> My whole reputation as a chef is shattered in just one night. 
You know what I've learned over all these years? That a lie only runs until it's taken over by the truth. Thanks, Gus. Thanks for the deposit back. No problem. You know that this place is yours anytime you need it. Bye, Gus. Not that I might beating the pants off you, but maybe I ought to sit the next one out. Your head's clearly not in the game. My head is totally in the game, okay? Come on. You know what bothers me the oh, most? What? Is that she didn't respect me enough to let me know. Tell me that he was coming so I could be prepared, you know? Oh, we're back to that? And did I tell you that she almost clobbered me <sighs> with an iron skillet? About three times. It just shows you should not get close to someone that you work with. Well, Angela and I work together, and we're good. So you're taking sides? Hey, I'm Switzerland. No side taking. But I do think it was kind of lousy that you just walked out on her. I mean, your timing just could have been better. What are you talking about, my timing? Well, for starters, it was Valentine's Day. And second, Holly. Did I not tell you? Holly, she came by and had some conversation with a big food critic right after you left. Yeah, you forgot to tell me that. How could you forget to tell me I, that? I just did. I didn't think she was going to close the place down. Since you were partners, I figured you'd know. Oh, I had no idea. I mean, I was planning on seeing her later for tonight. Nope. She canceled it. She must have been devastated. She was. She is. But from what Angela tells me, having you mad at her about your dad is equally devastating. in the back. I, uh, actually, I came here to see you. Look, if it's about the other night, it's I didn't know that you didn't know it. I just wanted to try to... I'm trying to tell you something. Fine. Talk, I'm listening. Don't you think it's time that we got over this silly little feud and we could just move forward? That's what I came here to say. I didn't realize how much it affected me till the other night. I saw you at the restaurant eating something that I created. Being a chef is what I am good at, and it's what makes me happy. And as much as I want to please you, I'm not a baker. I never will be. The truth is, when you decided to go to chef school, I felt like a failure. Like, I did something wrong. I let you down somehow. Listen, I know being a baker isn't as fancy as being a chef, but it's a respectable profession. Don't you understand? It's not just your profession. You've taken your talent and you've turned it into an art. You always wanted to be the best that you could be. And now you're the best baker that this city has ever seen. Just like you, I want to be the best chef that I can be. And you are. You proved that to me the other night. Matter of fact, I wanted to tell you then, but when I came to look for you after, you'd already left. Yeah. I, uh, I was upset with Nikki for inviting you without telling. She's a good girl, Paul. She had the best intentions. 
I know she is, Ma. And if you're mad at her because of something to do with us, well, then you owe her an apology. I know I do, but she won't return my calls. She's right, you know. Listen, whenever I've done something to upset your mom, I try and think of some way to make her smile. A gesture, a genuine gesture from the heart goes a long way. You're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Dad. Henry, thank you for coming to meet me. No problem at all. So, what did you want to talk to me about? I have some interesting news that you might find hard to believe. I'm all ears. Why are you hiding that newspaper? Because I'm your best friend and I'm trying to protect you. From what? There's a review of Cafe Cupid. Well, what does it say? Nothing, Nikki, you don't want to read this. It's yes, I do. Nikki Turner's recipes are in fact those of It reopens for business this week and I encourage all food lovers to drop by as you won't be disappointed. Your taste buds will thank you. You know what? I, I gotta go. I just... I gotta go. Wait, where are you going? To tackle my inspiration. Mmm. You should feature the chicken closer to the top and um, be sure and mention the ice cream cones. People find those fascinating. Sure thing. Holly? There's something I have to say to you. Something I, I need to say. Why don't you talk to my lawyer? No, that won't be necessary. You have been such an inspiration to me. As a young, aspiring chef, I looked up to you. To me, Holly Henson was a chef who had integrity and fierceness and originality. You were, in every sense of the word, my idol. <laughs> but now I know the truth. That to achieve the success that you've had, a chef has to be underhanded and dishonest. And that is a person I never want to become. So you can steal my recipes and you can destroy my reputation. But there is one thing that you will never take, and that is my spirit. You might think that you've won, but I just need you to know that you didn't beat me. I know that you don't want to talk to me, but can you come and meet me at Gus's kitchen? There's something that I want to show you. Yeah, I'll come meet. Bye. Before I forget, here's your security deposit back. So why did you want to meet me here? Look, I know I was wrong for blaming you. 
You were just trying to do the right thing, and I know how hurtful it was that I left you. But even more so for not sticking around when you and Holly had your falling out. The fact is, you deserve so much better. I'm not really following. What I'm trying to say is I'm not that type of person, the type of person that doesn't stick around, who doesn't support the people he cares about. <laughs> Nikki, that night was perfect. The crowd, the food, the space, you and I, we were perfect. And then I saw my dad and it threw me and I took it out on you. Paul, I'm so sorry. Don't be. I'm thankful because without you, I never would have made up with him. You made up? Yeah. That's awesome. But, um, still doesn't really answer what we're doing here. We are here because I have the keys. On. Welcome to Cafe Cupid 2.0. What? I'm confused. We're doing another pop up restaurant? No, we aren't. We are opening up a new permanent restaurant. Wait, wait, how can we afford this? I mean, it takes months for our restaurant to recover, and what about that review? Everyone thinks I'm a fraud. We just happen to have a very influential new investor. An influential investor? Henry. He's no longer with Holly, he is with us now. He called that critic who's going to be retracting their story and they're going to be writing a new splashy article on you, your recipes, and your new space. I don't know what to say. Say yes. Vicki Turner, will you be my valentine? Valentine's Day passed. Consider it a standing reservation for next year. When I'm awfully low, when the world is cold, I will feel a glow just thinking of you and the way you look tonight. I met someone online. Will you go out with me tomorrow night? Yes! Julia? Nikki! When the moon wow! Look at that moon, huh? It's beautiful. You guys were crazy about each other. We were just kids then. Happy Valentine's Day! While You Were Dating, all new tomorrow at 9 on Hallmark Channel.